Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at oddly satisfying things that musicians will find especially oddly satisfying. And if you're not a musician, not to worry, you'll still get a normal amount of odd satisfaction from these oddly satisfying things. But before we get into it, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, myself. I'm doing a flash sale on my course, Samurai Guitar Theory, The Rudiments, where the first 50 of you to use promo code SATISFY will get the course for 50% off. I designed this course to teach the rudiments of music theory and how they apply to guitar. It's professionally animated to make the tricky stuff easy to understand. If you're looking to dive deeper and figure out why music works the way it does, this is for you. Check it out at www.samuraigutartheory.com and don't forget to try promo code SATISFY. The first 50 people to do so will get 50% off. All right, let's get to it. Let me tell you a story about a young Sammy G. Around 2004, I was working in a music store and weekends were especially busy in the rental department. I would put together PA systems for bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, all the mitzvahs, house parties, bar shows, and the like. I sent many a happy customer out the door with microphones, speakers, amps, and cables. Lots of cables. Now, I quickly learned when it comes to keeping gear tidy, the average person is an absolute slob. More often than not, the cables would come back looking like this, a bunched up mess. Mondays, we were too busy taking rentals back in to deal with cable management, so they would just get chucked into a pile. Tuesday morning, however, I'd walk in with something like this staring me in the eye. A rat's nest, a wired shit hive, an unholy oversized black spaghetti pile from hell. I had many choice words for this type of mess, but someone had to deal with it, and I was that someone. It would take the better part of my mornings to complete this task, but when I was done, there was nothing more satisfying than gazing upon a pile of perfectly wrapped cables it would look something like this. Now, maybe cables aren't your thing, and a lovely pile of well-coiled leads doesn't do for you what it does for me. That's okay, maybe you can get down to my next oddly satisfying delight. Maybe when you were first establishing yourself as a producer, you did some mixing for the local talent. Maybe some fellow with an ego, greatly outsizing his skills, hired you to mix his self-proclaimed revolutionary rock band. Maybe when you got the Pro Tools session, it looked like this. This is what one might call a poorly managed recording. You'll notice that none of the tracks are named. If they were, it would look like this, making it quite easy to figure out what instruments they are. You could also go a step further and color code the tracks. The drum parts being one color, guitar is another, vocal is yet another. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Add markers for the section of the song, resize everything, and what do we have here? If there was a Miss America pageant for Pro Tools sessions, this might be a front runner. <laughs> If that doesn't satisfy you, you, my friend, might have a disorder. But even if that is the case, my next satisfying thing will surely melt the coldest, most calloused of hearts. Let me tell you about Trevor. Trevor is a friend of mine, quite a good guitar player, but an interesting character to say the least. A while back, he left me a message on my phone. I still have it. Take a listen. Yo, Sammy, what's going on, bud? Hello? Oh, sh is this is this voicemail? Uh, hey bro, can I borrow your dobro for a couple days? Why the heck not, I figured. Trev is a good enough guy, so I put some new strings on the old resonator, polished it up, he picked it up, and he was on his merry way. The couple days he was supposed to borrow my instrument turned into a couple months, and uh, you know those public service announcements that show you how people's looks have been altered by heavy drug use? Well, here's my dobro after two months of Trevor. Dirt and grime up and down the fretboard, one string is missing, and one string is going into the wrong tuning pig. There's dust all over the body, as well as some brown substance that I really, really hope didn't come from a living being. Let me tell you, bringing this old girl back from the gutter took me some effort. First of all, I had to remove the biohazardous strings. From there, a one over with the vacuum and a deep scrubbing of the body. Scrape the nasty off the fingerboard, polish the frets, oil the fretboard, restring it, and oh my, look at how nice she cleaned up. My 
last oddly satisfying thing for today also relates back to my friend Trevor. Now, despite being a bit of a human mess, Trevor's actually a surprisingly good composer. He has no formal training and he hates technology. So to write music, he uses a system that is part standard notation, part tab, part drawings of pianos and guitars, and part completely made up. Here's an example. To most, this would look like the ramblings of a madman, but since I had gone to music school, I was tasked with transcribing Trevor's musical messes into something the rest of the band could understand. Let's take a look at this. You'll notice everything is hand-drawn, even the staff lines. Clearly a ruler was not used. The chords are just drawings of, I guess, what he thought he was playing. Sometimes there are rhythms and bar lines, sometimes not. Some symbols are just complete nonsense. Make a mental note of how horrible this is because in 10 seconds, I'm gonna show you what this song looks like when it's translated into proper notation. Be prepared to be oddly satisfied with some well-written sheet music. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. If you're not satisfied at this point, I can only imagine that your emotional spectrum is out of whack and you lack the capacity for enjoyment. That, or we just have different tastes. Besides the stuff we talked about today, you know what else is quite satisfying? Understanding the building blocks of music and how they apply to guitar. For that, my course, Samurai Guitar Theory the Rudiments, has got you covered. If you're the kind of guitarist who has figured out how to play a number of things on his instrument, but wants to dive deeper and begin learning why music works the way it does, check out Samurai Guitar Theory the Rudiments, where I lay out the system I use for making music. That's available over at www.samuraigutarthory.com, and don't forget to put in promo code SATISFY. The first 50 people to use that will save 50%. Thank you all for watching. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for regular music content. If you want to check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and hit that like button. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you again soon.